engineering binds us both to the future and to the past. It, it has this permanence to it that I, I find quite inspiring. I'm Sue Charman Anderson, and I'm the founder of Ada Lovelace Day, um, which is uh, an international celebration of the achievements of women in science, technology, engineering, and maths. Is engineering a science? I'm going to say yes. Engineering is a science. So you have your your sort of your goal. You want to build a bridge. Uh, you have all of the physical properties of the materials that you're working with, steel and concrete, um, and then you have to model and work out exactly how much of those materials you need, how it needs to be put together, um, and then you test, not in reality, but with a computer model to find out if your hypothesis of materials that you need is correct, um, and then you go off and build it. Is engineering a good career? Engineering is a great career. There's so many opportunities and so many different types of engineering job uh, that it just caters for anybody and, and, and whatever it is that you like doing. Is engineering for me? Uh, yes, potentially. I think that engineering is something where if you like problem solving, um, if you like investigating things, if you like thinking about how to make the world a better place for human beings to exist in, engineering is for you. Can art students do engineering? Of course they can. Uh, being an art student does not mean that you do not have the capacity to be an engineer. Engineering is problem solving. Um, if you have any interest in or capacity for problem solving, you can be an engineer. Is engineering the future? Engineering is a major part of the future, yes. We are creating the future. Um, we're creating solutions for problems that are, are going to have such a major impact on how the world looks in 10, 20, 100 years time, but engineering is also the future in that you are physically creating structures and solutions that will last for 100, 200 years. And I find that quite amazing, actually. <laughs> Why are STEM subjects male dominated? So firstly, this is where the devil is in the details, because not all STEM subjects are male dominated. If you look at um, medicine, veterinary science, biology, uh, ecology, um, I think also environmental science, there are a lot of women in those areas. So I think the issue that we have, whether there is a skew male or a skew female, is that society from a very young age tells girls and boys what they should and shouldn't want to do. And so we're creating all of these narratives that are constraining girls' and boys' choices. And I think that's a real shame because I want us to live in a world where anybody can do anything. That's the future we should all be working towards, um, this, this kind of egalitarian future where children decide what they want to be when they grow up based on what they love, not based on what they think other people will approve of. How can STEM subjects be used? So many ways, so many ways. They can be used um, to help you put up shelves. They can be used to help you uh, cure cancer. Uh, they can be used to help you get into space. They can be used to help you understand how to tell stories. Really, the opportunities are, are endless. STEM is here to provoke your imagination into finding answers to problems that you face, that your friends, your family, your community, the world faces. And in doing that, make the world a better place for yourself and everybody else. And the ways that we can do that really are infinite. How can technology help climate change? 
in so many ways. Um, you know, technology it around everything from understanding how we could potentially clean up the atmosphere and sequester carbon dioxide to how do we use technology to reduce emissions? How can we use technology to understand um, where our biggest problems are with climate change? You know, where are the hot points and, and where do we need to really focus our attention? So I think, you know, if, if we stand any chance of uh, saving ourselves from climate change, technology is gonna be right at the center of, of that solution. How can technology reduce inequality? This is a really, really interesting question. Um, I think we tend to assume that technology is for the rich uh, and for the middle class, because that is how many of us experience it. But there are some really interesting uses of technology um, in, uh, lower income countries where, for example, farmers are using technology, they're using their, their phones to get uh, up-to-date market prices for their crops so they can get the best price and they know when to harvest and, and when to sell. Technology enables the transfer of information and that empowers people immensely. It can empower people, it can give people connectivity and communications and information. Um, we also need to be very careful that it isn't used to oppress. Are engineers in demand? Engineers are very much in demand. Um, we're not producing enough engineers. Uh, as a society, everyone needs engineers and I think the demand is only going to increase. As a society, we are very dependent on our infrastructure, on engineering, and the more that we develop engineering solutions to problems, the more we're going to need engineers.